Hi there. Now, in this question, we're shown this figure here. It shows a sketch of part of the curve C with equation y equals x multiplied by x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 2. And the curve C crosses the x-axis at the origin and at the points A and B. And in the first part, part A, we've got to write down the x-coordinates of the points A and B for one mark. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So at the points A and B, y would be equal to 0. And because this is factorised, then it will either be this factor, x that would equal 0, well that's the origin, or x plus 4 equaling 0, so that would mean that x would have to equal minus 4, or when x minus 2 equals 0, x would have to equal 2. Well clearly then minus 4 correlates with a, so this point at a has coordinates minus 4, 0, and at b that's when x equals 2, so at b this point here has coordinates 2, 0. OK, well, we now move on and we're told that the finite region shown shaded here is bounded by the curve C and the x-axis. And in part B, we've got to use integration to find the total area of that finite region for seven marks. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, first of all, what we're going to need to do is to integrate this equation here. And what I'm going to do is we'll just expand this first of all so that we've got the x multiplied by x plus 4 times x minus 2. Well, if you expand x plus 4 times x minus 2, you're going to get x squared, then you've got minus 2x plus 4x, so that's going to give us plus 2x. And then you've got 4 times minus 2, which is minus 8. And if I now expand this bracket, multiply through by x, you're going to get x cubed plus 2x squared, and then minus 8x. So we've got to use integration then to work out this shaded area. And what I can see is that I've got one part, part here which is above the x-axis and one that's below. And the one that's below, if we were to integrate our value for y with respect to x, it would give us a negative value because we've got a shaded area below the x-axis. So realising that, knowing that I've got to do this in two parts, from minus 4 to 0 and then from 0 to 2, what I'm going to do is just work out what the general integral of y is with respect to x. So first of all then, let's just integrate y, which is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x. So we'll just put that in brackets because we've got more than one term there x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x and I'm integrating all of that with respect to x. And in the usual way, if we integrate terms like this, we just add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So that's x to the power 4 divided by 4. And for this second term, add 1 to the power, so that's 2x cubed and divide by the new power, so that would be 3. And the last term, that's minus 8x to the power 1 at the moment. So if you add 1 to the power, that's 8x squared. And then divide by the new power, that's 2. And this reduces. 2 will go into 8 four times. So we've got minus 4x squared here. OK, well, when it comes to working out, say, these two areas, then let's say that we call this area... R1, OK, region 1, and then we'll go for this one here, OK, we'll just indicate that as being region 2. So for area R1, let's just put therefore area R1. 
what's it going to be equal to? Well, we're going to have to integrate this between the limits minus 4 to 0. And we can see then that this is our answer. So all we need to do is just put this in square brackets. We've got x to the power 4 over 4 plus 2x cubed divided by 3 minus 4x squared. And we've got to work this out between the limits then minus 4 to 0. So if we substitute 0 in first of all, then we're just going to get 0 plus 0 minus 0, which is just going to be 0. So I'll put it there anyway. And then we've got to subtract what we get when we put minus 4 through here for x. So we've got minus 4 all to the power 4 divided by 4. And then we've got plus 2 times minus 4 all cubed. And that's divided by 3. And then we've got minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 all squared. OK, so we'll just complete those brackets there. Now if I just border this off, OK, down there, what we've got then is that therefore the area R1 equals, well we've got 0 minus and then so minus 4 to the power 4 divided by 4 gives us 64. And then you've got, for the second term, minus 4 cubed multiplied by 2 divided by 3. That comes to minus 128 thirds. And then the last term here comes to minus 64. So the 64's cancel and we've got minus minus 128 over 3. So that equals 128 over 3. And that would be units squared because it's an area. Not that you have to put that in. Now when it comes to this part underneath the uh, x-axis going from 0 to 2, then if we were to work out that integral 0 to 2 of y with respect to x, you should find it's going to come out negative. And we'll just run through that because we know that if we integrate this, this is what we're going to get. So uh, let's just put that back in square brackets again as x to the power 4 over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared. OK, and then as I say, that's going between 0 and 2. And if we substitute our values in 2 first, you're going to get 2 to the power 4 then over 4 plus 2 times 2 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 2 squared. And then put 0 through, well that's 0, 0, minus 0. So you're going to have basically minus 0 there. Well if you work this out, this comes to minus 20 over 3. And it follows from this that the area can't be a negative value. We expect it to be negative because it's below the x-axis here. So it follows then that the area of R2 must be the positive value 20 over 3. 20 over 3 units squared. So therefore when it comes to the shaded area, just put an intro here, shaded area, all we've got to do is just add together the two areas. That's 128 thirds plus the 20 thirds. And what we get now is 148 thirds. OK, and again, I'm just going to write units squared in there. OK.